Here are four reasons you might want to consider having a living trust. And guess what? Avoiding probate is not one of the reasons. My name is Laura Hurd, and I'm an attorney who practices probate law and family law in San Antonio, Texas, and I've been doing so for over 35 years. And I, I have heard time and time again, people come in and say that they need a living trust to avoid probate. And generally, they don't. And a lot of times, I, after considering their whole situation, tell them that that's a waste of their money. One good reason, though, to consider a living trust is if you have a large estate. And by large estate, I mean one over $12 million. Because right now, Texas has no state um, estate tax, no state death tax. The only death tax that you have to worry about is the federal one. And the federal death tax only kicks in if you have an estate larger than $12.06 million. Now there are rumors that they're going to reduce that in the future. Maybe in 2026, they'll lower the threshold to 5 million adjusted for inflation. However, um, that's speculation. So at this point, if you really want to be safe and you're around 5 million, you might go ahead and do a living trust. But uh, otherwise, just keep your, um, keep uh, listening to the news and talk to your attorney every once in a while and ask them if the law has changed to lower the threshold. And if you are well below 5 million, you don't have anything to worry about. That's really hard for some people to believe who are in other states because there are states where 2 million may be enough or even less than a million might incur a state estate tax on top of the federal estate tax. But we don't have that in Texas. Another reason to consider a living trust though might be if you have property in multiple states, if you have real estate in other states, because the other state's laws concerning estate tax might kick in. And it's a little more complicated because you'd have to probate your will here in Texas and then get a certified copy of the probated will and the order admitting it to probate and get that admitted in the other state, get the other state to review the will and to sign some kind of an order saying that, that it meets their standards for probate and they accept it and will go ahead and, and take that property and put it in the uh, real estate records. And so if you're dealing with multiple states and um, you have property in multiple states, you might want to consider a living trust as an easier way to transfer that property and avoid the other state's estate tax. Now, a third reason might be if you're going to disinherit somebody. If you have um, an estate plan that leaves out one of your children, or if you have a second wife and the children from the first marriage don't get along with the second wife, or there's some other reason that you think that your children are actually going to contest your will, then you might want to do a living trust and just bypass the will altogether. And Lastly, if you have a child who will never be able to support themselves um, or manage their own property, say uh, your child is an alcoholic um, or has uh, a disability of some kind, a mental illness or a drug addiction, um, and you want somebody else to manage that property for them for the rest of their life. If the issue is just that they're a minor and at some point you expect them to reach an age of maturity where they can take over and, and manage their own property themselves, then that's probably better handled with a trust inside your will. It's called a testamentary trust. So there, there are different solutions for um, children who are disabled as well. There's different kinds of trusts that you may wanna consider but a uh, living trust may be one of them. And so those are four good reasons. If you have a lot of property over 12 million, if you have real estate in multiple states, if you have children that you're disinheriting or, or heirs who expect to receive property that you're disinheriting, 
or if you have a child who will never be able to manage their own property. But just saying I want to avoid probate, that's not really a good reason because you see, what they don't tell you is even people who have living wills often do not avoid probate. Every time they create a living trust, they usually create a will to go along with it. A will has no meaning unless it goes through probate. So why create one if you're not gonna go through probate? Well, it's a catch-all in case you forget to put some property in your trust, and that happens all the time. People will have one stock certificate or an account somewhere that they forget to title in the trust name, or they've got a piece of real estate somewhere that they didn't put in the trust name. And so when they pass away, the only way to get that property is to probate the will. And that property goes through probate. And so why do you hear people that um, push living trust so much? Part of it may be they don't know any better. I mean, I've had arguments with attorneys in other states who just insist that everybody needs a living trust, and I keep telling them, well, in your state they do, not in Texas. In your state they have a state tax. They don't have that in Texas. In your state they have a very complicated and expensive probate process. In our state, the probate cost is going to be less than the cost of creating the living trust. Um, and that is true if you have a well-written will, written by an attorney. Now, if you don't have a will, or if you um, try to do it yourself and you end up with an invalid will, then you're going to have a situation that's expensive. Um, and that's, that's a, a terrible um, thing if you just don't have a will at all. But if you've got a well-written will, the cost of probate the time and the expense is very minimal and probably less than you'd spend trying to figure out what your trust means and trying to manage it and, and definitely the cost of creating it. But there are people out there, they make money by creating trusts and they'll give you a big notebook full of documents that is part of your trust that is just very complex and, and it's very confusing and you won't, um, really want to read the whole thing yourself um, and so I generally say you know if you don't have a reason to have a living trust other than you just want to avoid probate don't do it it's it's an expense for something that you really don't need and if you have questions about this talk to an attorney who will sit down with you and actually find out about your beneficiaries and your property and find out if there is a reason why you should have a living trust instead of just assuming that everybody needs a living trust. Everybody needs a will, but not everybody needs a living trust. I do. I did. I'm done. Come see me. <laughs>